Welcome to the Get Your Writing Done podcast. I'm Trevor Thrall, author of the 12-Week Year for Writers. If you enjoy today's episode, please submit a review wherever you get your podcasts. That really helps. And for weekly updates on the podcast and other writing resources, you can subscribe to my newsletter at getyourwritingdone.com. If you write fiction, and even if you don't, my guess is that you use, have used, or are thinking about using Scrivener, one of the most popular writing apps on the planet. If you are thinking about it, or need some help making the most of Scrivener, this week's guest is the person to ask for help. Gwen Hernandez is an engineer turned author. She writes the popular Men of Steel series, but she has another claim to fame as well. After a friend told her about this cool new writing app, Gwen discovered and fell in love with Scrivener and wound up publishing blog posts about how to use it as she learned its ins and outs. Eventually, her growing acknowledged expertise led to a contract with Wiley to write Scrivener for dummies. It also led to a booming business in providing Scrivener training, both online and in person. In this episode, Gwen and I talk about why she thinks Scrivener is such a great writing app, how Twitter landed her a publishing deal, and she reveals a few power user moves that everyone who uses Scrivener should know about. Gwen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. No, it's great to have you on. Um, you know, my sister has has known you for a long time and has spoken so highly of you. And wow. I'm really glad to finally get a chance to talk in person. Yeah, me too. Yep. I, I love Keely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Haven't seen her in a while in person, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a pretty common sentiment these days, sadly. Um, so, you know, there are many reasons to talk to you. Um, and uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll cover at least a couple of the good reasons to talk to you. Um, you know, people who listen to this podcast are writers of all kinds, just trying to be sort of the most productive versions of themselves they can as, you know, aren't we all? Right. Um, and so, you know, today I wanted to talk about both your own writing and sort of your process and how you came to be a writer and all that good stuff. But then, also to talk about uh, the fact that you are a master of Scrivener, which is, I don't know how to describe, sometimes I describe it as the death star of, of writing apps, <laughs> because it seems to be on everyone's mind, it looms in everyone's consciousness. But, um, but, but you've actually um, done a lot of thinking and talking and teaching about Scrivener. So we'll, we'll get into that too. But, but first, just to, you know, let, listeners know, you know, who the heck you are, what do you write? Tell us about what you've written, what you're writing and, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I write romantic suspense and I've been writing since early 2009. Um, always focused on romance and I've been published in romance since 2014. So okay. that's still what I'm doing. Um, right and on. I use Scrivener to do it almost every day. Awesome. Awesome. And what, what, when did you know you were a writer? Did you like always have the bug from the time you were a kid? Yeah. Um, I definitely wanted to write like in junior high, I wrote a little book and kind of always enjoyed like the writing aspect of any classes that I had okay. and kind of always someday wanted to write a novel, but really, uh, didn't see it as a, a real career or anything like that. And, um, went a whole different path for a very long time. Yeah. And what so, led you to finally start writing books? That's um, not something everyone does. So, you know, it needs a little yeah, explanation. Kind of a, just a series of fortunate events, I guess. Um, I had been wanting to write, I was a manufacturing engineer in the, my last job and I had just really been feeling the itch to write and didn't know where to put it. And I was even thinking of like, I wonder if I could write for the employee newsletter, or, you know, just like anything oh, yeah. to kind mm -hmm. of get something out there. And then I ended up quitting my job because of uh, just, you know, needing to spend more time with my kids who were needing more, uh, more of my time and um, the being in a position where I could actually do that. So, um, but I was also bored because my kids were at school during the day. And I was like, now I have time to finally figure out this writing thing. And I spent a year trying to figure out, like, do I want to write nonfiction, fiction? Like, uh -huh. I really didn't know. Um, I assumed I would be more in the fiction realm because I'd been writing, uh, you know, how to do my job <laughs> for a very long time and, and um, training and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, but then I, I picked up some romances at the library and realized that really, like, fit the stories that were in my head and kind of dove into that and. 
um, started learning about what it is and how to write romance and all that kind of stuff. Right. So um, kind of took off from there. Fantastic. That's, that's really interesting. I, you know, you know, some people know since they were sort of kids that they're going to be a writer and some of us sort of find out later. I think that's really interesting. And the fact that your day job was so different from writing fiction, that's really interesting. It, yeah. And I, I assumed that because my day job was all very like logic and planning and, um, just, you know, very left brain that I would be a plotter. <laughs> I'm not a plotter at You're all. You're not a plotter. That's <laughs> an engineer who is not a plotter. That must be a first. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think it's more common than, than I would have realized, um, as I'm learning, you know, from other people, but yeah. 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 That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, you know, you hear about the Potter Panzer Wars, uh, of course. And, and recently I, I had a conversation with the guys who developed the Plotter app. Yeah. It's literally <laughs> called Plotter. I said, well, you guys must've taken a, a stance in the wars. Like, like, no, 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 we don't, you know, we don't, that's, you can use it for either one. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I mean the name, but, <laughs> but yeah, but it's, it, I, I think the reality as I've, you know, talked to more and more people is that, you might call yourself one or the other just because, but in reality, we all have to do some of both to get anything done. So, you know, it's, it's interesting that you may, because you're sort of trained as an engineer, you, you may not need to do as much frameworking because maybe your brain just is sort of building frameworks without you even realizing it. Could be. I, I think um, part of it is I enjoy the, the, I enjoy kind of not knowing where I'm going a little yeah. bit, even though it's frustrating as well. Sure. And just the way my brain works is like just very, um, lots of thinking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just lots of learning required to write any book, you know, yeah. uh, about the subject and everything just right. now. I, so, uh, you know, just if anyone looks at your books, you'll realize you, you probably do quite a bit of research to do some of these things because you, you cover topics that, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of subject matter material in your, in your novels. How do, do you, you find the process of research interesting? I take it then. I do. Uh, I am a, <laughs> I am a number one learner in, in yeah. there's a whole like Clifton strengths yep. thing, yep. but um, even if you're not familiar with that, I've always just been one of those people mm -hmm. who loves learning and likes the challenge of learning new things. Yeah. And um, so definitely that's part of the appeal for me is yeah. anytime I dive into a new book is, you know, all the books so I can read on the topic, whether it's the, the character's um, job or the location that they're going to be in or the how to figure out what like the crime is that the villains are up to or any right. of that stuff. Um, right. Yeah, that's a lot now, of fun. One of the things I, I have discussed with a lot of people is that sometimes research is so much fun and it's so comfortable that sometimes it's a little hard to pivot from the researching part to the actually writing stuff down part. Do you, do you find that that's an issue for you or do you have a strategy of moving from one to the other? Or is it just sort of a natural thing for you to progress? Um, I think it's mostly been natural. If anything, I've been fighting myself thinking um, I need to start writing when I'm not actually ready yet uh, um, because I'm trying to move forward. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, if I, if I sit down to write and I don't know what I'm supposed to say yet, then I'm not done, I guess. Right. So yeah. I've been trying to remind myself of that. Like when I feel like I really should get to writing, I'm like, well, if I don't know what to say, yeah. I mean, I can write words all day. <laughs> right. Right. The word but writing if, is easy enough, but you, I have a hundred thousand words on my current book. Um, and I still don't know where it's going yet. <laughs> so that's fine. so now do you find that you end up writing long and then kind of whittling back or do you end up sort of pantsing your way to the more or less the manuscript that it's going to be? Yeah, I tend to actually be a fairly spare writer and I have to go back and layer in um, some mm -hmm. of the details like the setting and the emotion and stuff like that. Um, but I guess I kind of do write long if you consider how many versions of a book I, yeah, sure. I like start before I actually find the story and then write that story. Mm. Um, and so, how much of the book do you write many times like that before you kind of the whole thing, like a, the first part or? It's usually anywhere from like a couple scenes to like 25% of the book, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, like to up to like 20,000 words or something so like that. Instead so instead of measure it twice and cut once, it's more <laughs> like write four or five times and then finish. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's annoying, but it, uh, no, I, you know, I, I don't think that's uncommon at all. I, I and, and, you know, interestingly, I of course write mostly nonfiction uh, or totally only nonfiction, but uh, you know, and I don't 
I don't even bother keeping track anymore because of how much I rewrite thing. I mean, just part of the process. I don't, I don't give it two thoughts anymore, but I remember sort of being horrified when I was writing my dissertation, which was the first sort of book length thing I had ever written. And I, I actually kind of kept track of these things. And most of that uh, manuscript I wrote over at least nine times. It, it just horrifying. Like I couldn't believe it. And now I realize, well, that's just how you make something really good is you, you kind of go over things until you really, really, really like it. And hopefully it's not nine times, but you know, <laughs> a few. Yeah. I've had some of those. Well, and I, I feel like um, the way my brain works, I'm actually better in revision. So it's like, yeah. first I have to kind of spit mm-hmm. something out yeah. and then the next day I'll wake up with like, oh no, but this would be even better. Or yeah. if I have them go this direction, and you, you know, so it's, it's this weird balance of having to be writing but not knowing very far ahead what, yeah. what I need to be working on. Yeah. Um, and Only I was as just, as far as your headlights can see. Not yeah, it is kind of that thing. And I, I think that um, that is, even though it frustrates me because it's a slower process than some people who are like, okay, 80,000 words divided by a thousand words a day, 80 yeah. days, I have a book. Right. I like, I have never yeah. been like that. Yeah. Um, but I, w- I think if I were, I would probably be bored. And I probably yeah. wouldn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> right. It would turn it into something that was rote and routine and that wouldn't be, the discovery and the creative sort of feeling that you, you know, that you're looking for the joy that you're looking for in the process of writing, which I think at root is why a lot of writers write. Yeah. And if I don't have the challenge, I mean, that's what I like about anything, every job I've ever had, there was no more challenge. I was done. Yeah. No, I I hear you loud and clear on that. I I have a similar personality. I, I I need to chew on new things um, or I can't, I just, I, I'm not good at being bored. Let's put it that way. That's exactly. Very, very bad. My whole family jokes, don't leave dad alone in the house for the weekend. If, uh, unless you are sure you want the furniture rearranged because I just, I can't leave things alone. <laughs> so, all right. So you, you started writing. Did you start off writing with Scrivener? Did you grab it immediately or did you find it at some point? Um, I got lucky and had a friend recommend it to me about six months in, uh-huh. uh, so you, maybe nine months in. So you were a newbie and, and they dropped a Scrivener on you, which is kind of an interesting move, frankly. Well, she's like, oh, because this is back when it was Mac only. She's like, you're a Mac user. Uh-huh. You got to try this software. Right. And I was like, yeah. great. And then uh, I remember my first thought being, well, I already have Word. Like, what do I need? What is this going to do that Word can't do? And I opened it and I was immediately Oh, this solves so many things that have been bugging me. Uh, so, I, so tell me about what, what was the unboxing? What, what was that like? <laughs> what, what grabbed you right away when you opened Scrivener? Uh, the, the, the first thing that grabbed me was the fact that um, it'll just go back to where I left off. Uh, yep. um, so when I open and not, not just within, you know, I think word now there's a way you can do that or whatever, but gosh, I still don't know um, what it is. If you can, I don't remember. I don't even use word anymore, but um, yeah, it would just, you would open it up the next day and it would be literally right where you left off. Boom. And that, and that's great when you're revising too, because then you don't have to like make a mark and like, okay, yeah. go search for this right. or anything like that. It's just right there, ready to go. Um, I think the other thing that I had really been struggling with was how to deal with say 70,000 words of a manuscript and trying, if I want to go back and fix something, or um, maybe I get an idea for something that needs to come later and just want to write a paragraph about it. Like, I just didn't know where to put those things Mm -hmm. and moving things around wasn't easy. And if I want to go back to that scene where, you know, um, they were uh, running from the bad guys at the funeral or whatever, like I have to scroll or try to do some kind of search, whatever. And so Scrivener, you know, just lays out all of your scenes on the sidebar there I, it's kind of like your file system for your computer, but for your manuscript, right? And so you can just jump to whatever piece of your manuscript you want to look at or work with um, very easily. Yeah. And so those were kind of the the two things that sold me on it immediately. Um, even though those were kind of simple things, it's so cheap. I was like, well, <laughs> you know, right. I, and I, I, you know, my logical brain does love being able to like have a good organized overview of what I'm working on so that I can, and because I'm a pantser, I think I almost need that more in some ways to help me sort of keep everything organized and neat, which makes other parts of my brain happy. Yeah. Because the way Scrivener is organized, you know, even as you're pantsing, you are basically creating a series of breadcrumbs that, that help you be organized, not necessarily to plot, but to be organized, which is helpful. Right. Yeah. I can see the structure growing. I can see my progress in a very mm-hmm. vision, you know, easy, easy to visualize way. And, um, 
you know, I do sort of write to story structure in a very loose way. Like that's the map I use is like, mm-hmm. I know I'm heading toward this kind of a scene, even if I don't right. know what's going to happen in that scene. Um, and so I can kind of see, you know, how far along am I very quickly? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so you, you embraced it. You never looked back. You, ne- you never <laughs> tried the competitors for very long. I take it. And you, you just sort of rolled nope. with Scrivener. No, it and, just really worked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's awesome. I, I'm trying to remember, and I just cannot, I, you know, you try too many programs over the years and I bought Scrivener many years ago. It feels like forever ago, but I don't, I literally couldn't tell you probably 2010, 2011, something like that. I thought it was super cool. If I could find the old computer that it's on, um, it probably still has a novel or two that I've kind of sort of plotted out, you know, sort of thing. I thought it was great. Um, didn't really fit what I was looking for in, a, you know, for nonfiction writing at the time. And, and you know, it's changed a lot since then. Um, so I don't know what I would think if I used it now, but, but how, how did you go from someone who was six months into a writing career and just learning this new tool to winding up writing Scrivener for dummies? Because that's <laughs> like, everybody knows the dummies guides. Like, holy crap, you wrote Scrivener for dummies. Like, you know, are you a billionaire? I mean, like, wow, that's oh, amazing. I wish. And how the heck did that happen? <laughs> that's a fun story for me, at least. Um, so I had started writing blog posts on Scrivener because that was back in the time when all the editors and agents were like, you must have a blog to have a presence on the web. Right. And, you know, start, you know, I was like, what am I going to fill this blog with? So um, I was just like, well, this is a cool program. I had the, the friend that shared the software with me, then later asked me how I did something when we were like Uh working together. And I was like, oh, that would make a good little blog post. I'm sure other people would like to know. And so then I was like, well, this is fun. I'll just go looking for features to share, you know, and I would just kind of like discover more stuff and write a blog about it and then go looking Mm -hmm. through the menus for things that sounded fun. And um, so I did this whole series of blog posts and got um, you know, the Scrivener guys, because this was only a couple years after it had been released, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. were sharing all my blog posts. Yep. And, and they're hungry thing. for the audience too, because no one knows who they sure. are yet. Right. Yeah. And there weren't a lot of people talking about it back then. Mm-hmm. And um, so it just kind of kind of looked in the timing wise. And then I had enough of a following after a while that people were like, you should, you know, write a book or teach a class or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so excuse me, let me take a drink real quick. Um, I actually started teaching online classes through some of the writing chapters Mm -hmm. and then eventually kind of broke out on my own and and started teaching them on my own platform. And somebody had pitched the idea of a Scrivener book to the four dummies people at Wiley. And then he couldn't fulfill the contract for whatever reason, something came up. And so then they went looking for someone um, who could still write the book. And what they did is they went out on Twitter and put out like, hey, who are the Scrivener experts? And got back a bunch of names. I had no idea this was going on at the time. And um, apparently my name came up enough that they included me in that email that they sent out. So they they invited several different people to um, consider submitting a proposal. And um, when I got the email, I thought it was a joke, like a <laughs> hoax. I was like, who's going to... Because, you know, at this time I was writing fiction and trying to get agents and editors to give me any attention whatsoever. So mm-hmm. to have an editor just email you and be like, hey, want to submit a proposal for this book? I'm like, where's the camera? You right. know, so <laughs> um, I looked him up. He turned out to be a legitimate person and I emailed him back. And so then I submitted the proposal and they accepted it. I might have mm. been the only one who did. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. And so then I had like four months to write a book. Oh, wow. So they, yeah. they were wanting it in a hurry. Yeah, it was already overdue because um, they had had it on their publishing schedule sure. for earlier that year. So yeah. um, I I think I signed the contract in like February or early March, and it was due at the end of May. So now, <laughs> so, did you use Scrivener to write dumb, oh, yeah. Scrivener for Dummies? So there you go. I mean, yeah, that's like I prob- probably the honestly don't know how I would have done it without Scrivener because yeah. it you know, allows you to keep, like I use the color coding to keep track mm-hmm. of um, for revisions, like where I am in the revision process. And especially for a book like that with a traditional publisher where you're having to submit each chapter as it's yep. done. 
Um, and then it's coming back with editorial comments and you still have chapters you haven't even started yet. So yeah. kind of keeping track of all that, yeah. it was very useful, even though once I, you know, put it, put it in word, then I had to work with them in word through their comments section and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, um, but just, just having that sort of project management dashboard yeah. in Scrivener to keep track of it. And then I could bring the finished pieces back in. So, you know, I have the finished versions in there as well. Um, yeah, it was very, very helpful to be able to yeah. keep track of all that. Yeah. All right. So this question for you, writing a, sure. writing a dummies guide, like, okay, it's basics. It's for, you know, dummies. Uh, but did you learn anything about Scrivener and the writing process as you were writing that book? I definitely, um, I learned that there were things that I thought I understood a certain way that I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> but um, because they, they used the, the developers were the subject matter experts who went through the book and did an editorial run. Absolutely. Um, so there were a couple things that, you know, were clarified and stuff, but yeah, I learned a lot because I found that like, I might know how to use something on one level, but in order to be able to explain it to people in a way that was deep enough for the book, I had to go deeper. Yeah. And so then I would be like, I didn't even know I could do that, you know, right. footnotes right. and things like that, that I don't use on a regular basis, especially. Um, so yeah, I definitely came out of the writing process knowing even more than I did when I went into it, which really helped a lot. And um, yeah. All right. So if there was, if there's anyone listening who hasn't tried it yet, mm -hmm. what would the pitch be to them to say, look, you should give it a whirl. Like what's, what are the things that you think kind of really help sell it to someone who's looking for a new tool? Um, the first thing I do now is tell people if whatever they're using doesn't have any pain points, keep using it. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, Scrivener, we always talk about the, the steep learning curve with Scrivener. And I think it's, I don't necessarily think it's steeper than anything else. It's just that people come into it and they're like, I want to use all of it. Like how many people right. want to use all of Excel or all of Word or, you know, yep. very few who uses mail merge on Word? <laughs> right. I still don't know how it's, to use that. It's there though. Right. Yeah. But who cares <laughs> uh, for most of us, but on Scrivener, you're like, I would definitely use that and that and that <laughs> and that. Right. And, and so yeah. they want to know it all and then they get overwhelmed. And I'm, yeah. so um, I, I definitely recommend starting with the basics. Um, like I talked about the structure. So, you know, adding a new document for each either scene or chapter or mm -hmm. chunk, whatever, like smallest chunk you think of think in yep. for me, that's scenes. And um and then being able to keep all of the elements for your project in one place. So it's not just the writing, like in Word, it's just yeah. the writing, right? But I can also have pictures. I can have all of my character notes and um, settings. I can store links to web pages. I can, you know, bring in PDFs or whatever. You can whatever. combine your research and your writing and sort of what, so you don't have to leave and, and come back. And, and kind of divert your attention. And God forbid you should go to the web again if you're actually trying to also get writing done in a particular session, right? So. Yeah, and and just not having to like have a different, um, okay, well now I have to use Evernote or OneNote for all of this. And, you know, and I've got, I've got sticky notes all over my desk and I've got, you know what I mean? It's, right. it, it can all be in that one place. Right. Um, so to me, those two things are the biggest. Um, and then just being able to capture your thoughts and ideas for um, either changes or for future things. So like, let's say you have an idea for a future scene. It could just be as simple as, you know what, when they get to this point, I think they should X, Y, Z. And where do you normally put that, right? I used right. to put it at the bottom of my Word document and then just keep yep. pushing it down. Yep. And now I can just create a new document, write the little notes. There's a synopsis section, right? So I can write the little notes in the synopsis section of what I think should happen here. Maybe I have a snippet or two of dialogue that I think would be fun mm -hmm. to include. Yep. And I put that in there and then I get back to where I was, but I don't have to worry about losing that yeah. as right. I'm going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, that, that, that particular issue is the reason I abandoned Word quite some time ago. And I, the, I, I, cause, because I would be writing something and you'd be like, I have a note, but there's nowhere in the manuscript for the note. So where the hell does the note go? Well, right. the note has to go in another document. Ugh. And so, you know, over the years, I have naming conventions for all these <laughs> sub documents that have to be in the same folder because I can't keep 
non-manuscript things in the manuscript. So, and that just turns out to be a waste of time and also confusing and no one else can find it. And so, you know, not very optimal. And Scrivener right. has, has de- is one of the programs that, that solves that in, I think, a way that, I, frankly, I'm surprised Word hasn't adopted at this point. I mean, it's so sensible to me. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, Word has like the outline feature if you're willing to use styles and all that stuff. And so some people do, but it still doesn't handle, I mean, you can leave comments, but those are always like, yeah, which are- were, um, Scrivener has comments also, which I love comments and annotations. So you can leave a note right at a position. Like right. I do a lot of, oh, think a better word or like right. she should say something witty here or whatever, right. like needs sure. a better opening line, you know, right. all these things. <laughs> How does CPR work again? That kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, all of that stuff attached to the exact spot that needs the help. Um, but yeah, still there's like so many different types of notes you can leave for yourself in different places yeah. to yeah. put them um, depending on what your need is. So it kind of takes the place of, like you said, all those separate documents, Absolutely. they're all just collected. Yeah. 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 Um, I've, I've been working with some, some writers who have um, done sort of an incredible job of, you know, making Scrivener their home base uh, for all those different efforts that they're, that they're doing from research to world building, to character sketches, to scene design and organization plotting. And then, and of course the writing and one uh, fellow in, in one of the writing groups I run even has, you know, I, I teach people how to use this system called the 12 week year for writers. And, yeah. and he even uses Scrivener to incorporate his 12 week year and his weekly plans and all his scorekeeping. And he's got it all in Scrivener because he's like, I didn't want to have to leave because I'm sitting here working away. And at the end of the day, I want to sort of, you know, update the plan and where I'm at, but why, why would I want to leave? And I was like, well, I don't think you should like, he, he really figured out a great way to do it. And I was like, wow. That's a pretty, pretty flexible tool to be able to do all that. So it is, that's one of, that's kind of the beauty and also the frustration for people, right? It's so flexible that it, it gets overwhelming when they don't have something that just says, here's exactly how you do it no matter what. Right. Yeah. But it works for almost everything. I have like clients who are lawyers, academics, Mm -hmm. um, people in seminary, um, obviously (laughs) novelists, nonfiction writers, you know, and I use it for uh, my blog posts. I have one thing that has all my blog posts and newsletters in it. So I have everything from the last 10 years. I can go back and just search, like, have I talked about this before? What did I say? Do I want to do it differently? Do I want to copy that? You know, that kind of thing. Um, I use it to keep track of my appearances. Like if I'm going to give workshops and Mm -hmm. all the things they said in the email, plus what I sent them, like all in one place. Um, So there's kind of a lot of different ways to utilize it. I wish I'd had it in grad school yeah. instead of word. It would help yeah, me no. a lot. So, Although, and then you can keep track of like how many words you've written and how your goals yes, and all that yes, kind of stuff. So. Absolutely. Which I think is kind of a, uh, a, a bottom sort of basement level requirement at this point for, a, I think for a, a reasonable writing app. I mean, that's such simple thing to have. And yet, you know, Word's not particularly friendly about that either. Um, not that we're trying to dunk on Microsoft Word, guys, don't come get us, but like, you it's know. Just it's just not just... made for super long form no. writing. It's made for business writing. And honestly, even then, I think I would I still don't... rather organize everything in Scrivener and dump it into Word as like, here, I'm handing it into you. I don't, you I don't use it for anything, except for if for the people who need to collaborate in Word, I will eventually dump it in Word to send to them. But otherwise, I'd I don't really see any reason for it anymore. Uh, but all right. So, so I, I, I want to sort of zoom out to sort of more of a 30,000 foot view and ask you your thoughts about the importance of tools, writing tools for writers, because I'm, I'm a tools person and, and I, I, have spent, I don't know how many hours, you know, downloading probably more apps than any other person has ever downloaded that have to do with writing just because I'm interested in them and I want to see how they work. And I'm always looking for another one that does things better or more interesting or more beautiful or whatever. But Mm -hmm. for me, the reason that really at root that I do it is that I get a lot of joy from having the right tools and Mm -hmm. I, I, they inspire me to do my work in the first place. I I hope they also help me do better work, but, but really I'm not, I don't even care. I I just, I'm happier when I use them. What, what's your take on tools? I mean, does Scrivener give you sort of a feeling that's important to you as you write or, and and what other tools do you use that you love? Uh, I think 
obviously finding the tools that work for the way you work is, is key. So whether that's as simple as like a Google doc or Scrivener. Um, yeah, it, for me, Scrivener, I think it makes me feel calmer because I open up my manuscript and I know everything's there and I can see exactly where it all is and I know exactly how to find it. And so I'm not spending mental energy on worrying about where all of my stuff is and I can just write. Um, some people open it up and it stresses them out. So I get that too. <laughs> it's fine. I, I recommend using the blank menu, blank template <laughs> <laughs> um, tools, but yeah, any, I think, so tools can become a distraction for people. They can become something that um, just like waste time or, you know, they get sucked down into playing with it and don't actually get anything done. Um, but I think when you find the tools that work for you, obviously they're worthwhile. Um, and I, and even if they take a little time to learn, if they really are going to help you, you know, then I think it's worth it. Um, other tools that I use, I'm trying to think for writing itself, I pretty much, um, don't, do you care what computer you use? I'm a Mac girl. Yep. So there you yeah. go. That's a big, I mean, for, I mean, frankly, I don't, I know a lot of writers who will never write on anything that's not a Mac. So that's one, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't always, I spent a lot of time using uh, Microsoft computers. You know, all of my jobs were on Microsoft, but uh, at some point my husband like convinced me to switch and I was like, I don't know. And then <laughs> uh, you gotta relearn all your shortcuts or whatever. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, now I find it so much more intuitive. And when I go back to windows, uh, it, you know, it works. It's fine. It just feels a little clunky to me after being on Mac. So, but you know, no shade, anybody who uses windows it's, or uh, Microsoft, it's, uh, there's a Scrivener for, for uh, Absolutely. <laughs> windows as well. Um, I do use some tools like, like, uh, you know, I've used things like pocket to just kind of save things that I sure. think I might want to read later. Sure. Um, actually, honestly, the best part of that is I often don't go back and read it later. And it turns out I didn't need it. So that's sure. like the number one most useful thing for a pocket for me. Right. It's just checking off. I don't need to think about it anymore. Um, well, cause I'll get all excited about things and collect all these, all these reading materials and then realize I went way overboard and I really didn't need that. Or it'll be something somebody sent me that's really interesting. And I'll be like, oh, I'll just add that to my reading list. And then I don't waste the time reading it now. And then I'm happy that I never got around to it. So, um, yeah, I, I try to really kind of keep things clean and simple. And uh, so, yeah, Scrivener and like a notebook, because I do still like to write things yep. on, on paper when I'm sort of brainstorming what can come next or what's their backstory or just anywhere I'm stuck and I'm trying to figure right. out if I just start asking myself questions on paper. Sometimes it works better than typing it out. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I, I think a lot of people have that kind of kinesthetic need to touch and, and, and mess with paper and pen or something, you know, to get the brain in certain, in certain places that the keyboard is some, somehow uh, it's great for product production, but sometimes it's not, it, maybe it's too mechanical or something. And, and our, our lizard brains need, need paper. Or so I don't know. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But. I mean, a whiteboard works too. I wish I had yeah. a giant whiteboard. Cause I, I like I have the, a giant um, <laughs> <laughs> I like the yeah. fact that I'm not setting it in stone. Yeah. It's like erasable, yep. even, even yep. sometimes pen and paper. Like I won't use my journal. I'll use just generic paper that I can throw away because I, I know it's like, it doesn't have to be engraved. <laughs> I have a leather bound journal that I've had for 10 years and is, has all blank pages because I, nothing I've ever thought is important enough to write it down. And I, I'm paralyzed. I, I could never write in that thing. Whereas actually what I run on legal pads. I've burned through thousands of legal pads in my life because they're all unimportant pieces of paper. So anything you write down, eh, it's, it might be good. It might not, no big deal. But if you're writing the journal, it has to be permanent. People can read that That's later. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. Can't do that. I just use my journal for daily. Like I, I think things out like um, more struggles than actual brainstorming. Most of the time, sometimes I will do some brainstorming in there, but it'll be like, what's on my mind. Sometimes yeah. it'll just be like, I have to remember to do this today. That's it for the whole right. day. Um, and it, it's just more of a centering thing in the morning sometimes, yeah. but, um, yeah, the brainstorming, I'm like, let's get this three ring binder or whatever the spiral notebook over here. And as much as I hate wasting paper, I, know. I, I feel it bad, just, but... I, I like try to use old printer stuff and now we don't print yeah, anything anymore. No. So <laughs> I don't have any old documents that I can write on the back of anymore. So, 
So tell so. me, um, you, you wrote the book. I, I'm assuming the book did very well. It has tons of great reviews on Amazon. And you've been doing all, all sorts of business since then. So how much time do you spend writing versus teaching at this point in life? Um, it varies. So I do private training a few hours a week of private training. Um, I've tried to put all of that on like Wednesdays and Thursdays yes. now, yeah. cause I used to have it all over the week and I found it, it's very hard to change yeah. my focus. Um, so I'm trying to sort of consolidate that. And, um, you know, I'm trying to write like, or I guess I should call it, I'm trying to get away from using the word writing because I do, I do a lot of non-writing yep. manuscript work. So I just call it writing Same creative thing. time, yep. <laughs> you know, uh, two to three hours a day of creative time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of actively thinking or writing mm -hmm. or whatever about the, or researching mm -hmm. um, all of those count. I have to remember that all of those count Absolutely. and they're all productive. Um, I'm like, just this last year or so is me trying to learn to love my process instead yeah. of fight it. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And then like when I'm creating a new online class, that'll just be all I do usually for like a month, um, mm -hmm. is just spend three or four hours a day on that, knock that out, yep. do some other business stuff. And then I'm basically done for the day. So I, I usually try to do it in between books. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll okay. when I finish right. a book, Get a break, I'll do something pop different. out a new class, give my brain a break. Yeah do something different. So, so tell me a, a, a bit about the different classes you have and, and what they're good for, what, what kind of people would find them useful? Sure. Um, so I have a fundamentals class and a compile class right now. Um, and the fundamentals class is, is geared for beginners and it kind of gives them all of the most important basics to get them started. There's really not a lot of bells and whistles in that one um, because those tend to overwhelm people. And so it's just like all the core stuff that you need to know to get working in it. Um, and then I, I did compile next, um, because that's how you get your work out of Scrivener. Yep. And that is the one that paralyzes a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can do it the really quick and dirty way and just get it out and then work with it in some other program. Or, uh, you know, I've got the whole thing on how to, how to produce it for publishing basically right. Right. ebook and right PDF to... and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I do all of my own books, um, directly from Scrivener into formats that can be uploaded to the retailers. So um, my next class that hopefully will be later this year is um, the intermediate kind of the in between all the fun bells and whistles mm -hmm. stuff, the color coding and the split screen. And actually I might have split screen in the first one, but like just all the extra little things, snapshots and mm -hmm. all the cool stuff that um, a lot of people don't know is there. All right. So, so give, tell us one cool pro move that most people probably don't know how to do, but like, that's totally awesome. Okay. Uh, honestly, I, I think, um, that I haven't already mentioned, I guess I'll say snapshots <laughs> because it allows you to save a version of the document so that you can make changes to it without losing your original text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wish I had had that back when I was writing my dissertation because I, I wrote, one version and then I thought it was garbage. So I wrote a new version and then I didn't have a copy of the old one. And then I realized I liked the first one better. And then I had to recreate that again. And if I'd had this kind of approach where, you know, I could just kind of keep each iteration nearby mm -hmm. and that would have been so useful. That's well, and it's a, like a little stack a all under the same yeah. document. So you don't even have to like duplicate it and put it yep. into a separate folder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do that. I have like an unused scenes where I kind of throw old things that I'm not using. Yeah. Um, but if I'm just going to revise, then I use snapshots. So awesome. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. All right. So this has been a fantastic conversation. I, I I think people listening who haven't yet tried Scrivener are probably now dying. If they haven't already downloaded, they're going, they're going to, and they're going to check it out. So t tell people where they can find out more about your writing and about your courses. Okay. Um, GwenHernandez.com is my main website and you can get to everything from there. Um, I also have a ScrivenerClasses.com that is just devoted to the classes and training. Um, so that's where you can find all of my stuff. And just Scrivener has 30 day free, 30 use free trial. So nothing to lose. Right. Yeah. I, that will definitely, and I, I can tell people from experience that you will, you will know sooner than 30 uses, whether you're, it's something that it's going to work for you or not. So that's a pretty generous uh, offer, I think. So yeah. fantastic. Gwen, very great to talk to you today. Thanks for taking the time to 
to talk with me about Scrivener and, and your writing. Absolutely. And congrats on the book and getting everything going with your community. So thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much.